So in this video, I wanted to cover exporting in a JSON format, and there are several reasons to do that. But in this video, I'm going to cover just the developmental reasons to do that. So even if you're going to export into uh, HTML in the end, during the development, if you use the JSON export, it enables you to use the uh, viewer. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a sky here just because I think we need a blue sky just for the effects a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit File, Export into the JSON format. And I'm going to make sure this is checked. I've already checked it and so it, it, it will stay checked the next time you go ahead and do this export method. And I'm going to hit the export and it's going to go ahead and run my my program in this viewer and this viewer is part of the SDK and what happened just now is this viewer pulled in my JSON file so I can examine the various parameters of it so to give you an example um, let's go look at the God rays and this is very similar to how your project is going to look but I have a bunch of other tools as well. So if you look at the top right here we have uh, the number of, of verts and tries and draw calls and shaders. It tells you um, down on the bottom left I can select one of these and it will actually uh, give you the the ID of that object that corresponds to its identity inside your source blend file. And in addition to that we have along the right hand side a lot of the parameters that you used when creating this file. So for example if I come to God Rays I can adjust the settings I can tweak those settings and this makes no permanent effect on your export but what it does is allows you to go ahead and play around with it and get it where you want and then this number will correspond to the number in your blend file. So once you get the number you like, you can you can copy paste it or you can just say, okay, well, I, I think that needs to be 1.5. And another example, let's look at the shadows. So, so I've got my shadows there. So if I come up here to the shadows and I'm going to adjust the blur radius on those just to see what it looks like. And so I can determine from this. So let's say I want it to be, you know, I want the blur radius to be 40. Um, and I can do that all without doing repeated exports to test a bunch of different settings. And let's check our lighting. So I can come and uh, change the energy of my lighting. And this has a, a sort of a coarse energy that uses whole numbers and energy precise, which is using decimals. So if I wanted an energy of say 3.5 or something like that, I could come here and, and just do a number of, of little tweaks until I get it where I want. And we've got frames per second it's rendering at. Um, you can you can change the quality, you know, in the in the player, in this in the default player that you export in, there is the option of changing the quality and you can see what it looks like here. Uh, we can have the option of pausing and so right now it, it won't do anything it won't uh, the animations won't play and the camera controls are gone so I can resume that and so here here is the shadow setting um, and here's the blur radius so if if we determined in our tweaking that we wanted to change that we could come back here and, and change it accordingly and here's an interesting setting down here there's a stereo view option and I think this is the beginnings of you know a virtual reality that I think this will evolve into eventually and this is a a red blue stereoscopic view so um, I, I haven't looked too deeply into uh, blend for webs support of that but that is very interesting so I can see I can see this developing further I've messed around a little bit with the oculus and some of the other uh, VR devices out there and I think we're all eagerly awaiting the Microsoft HoloLens and so I think 
uh, as those technologies develop, I would expect that we will see developments in Blend for Web as well.